Back in April, pop singer-songwriter Megan Trainer got some flack for talking negatively about public school teachers, which made me think back to last summer when Hillsdale College of Michigan's president, Larry Arn, also made some controversial statements about public school teachers and college education departments and has been ridiculed for it ever since. Let's get into it. Warning, the following program contains critical thinking, honest opinions, viewpoints on culture that may seem conservative, and a positive view on absolute detestable things such as marriage and children. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome or welcome back to the Subtle Rampage podcast, where I discuss the things that I feel like discussing. Sometimes those are things of a political nature. Sometimes they're things of a cultural nature. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. You know, those things cross over quite a bit. But today in in personal news, guys, um, I am finally 21. And my best friend got me this cute little glass with a little glass straw in it that I now get to drink water of because I'm a super edgy 21 year old. But anyways, today I want to talk about two totally different people from two totally different backgrounds. They have completely different lines of work and what I would say um, is completely different lifestyles and belief systems because both of these people have actually come under fire for the same thing, criticizing teachers. How dare they? Granted, they both did so for two different reasons, but still. So pop singer and songwriter Megan Trainer, you may know her for her, I guess, a uh, body positive song that simultaneously threw shade at skinny women, all about that bass. Uh, it was relentlessly played on the top 40 when I was back in middle school. But yeah, she also married that redhead kid from the Spy Kids movies, in case you were wondering. So there's that. Anyways, Megan Trainer has a podcast herself that she does with her brother. It's called Working On It, I guess, which is weird since um, last time I checked, I'm the only one in existence that does a podcast, so it doesn't make sense. But like three months ago or something, she had a guest on her show, a certain Trisha Paytas. Now, those of you who are closer to my age or have been on the internet for a while and keep up with certain groups of influencers or YouTubers, whatever you want to call them, you'll probably recognize her name. She's been pretty controversial for years. Uh, There's a lot of choices that she's made that I would never personally have made, and she's put a lot of things out there on the internet that maybe you shouldn't put out there on the internet. But guys, okay, now Trisha is married, okay? She seems pretty happily married and has a cute little baby girl with her husband. Uh, She's absolutely adorable. But Trisha herself has kind of talked a bit about how she's changing And she can't take back a lot of the stuff that she's put out there, a lot of the opinions that she's held, a lot of the things that she said that maybe weren't entirely appropriate, you know, whatever it was. She's just, uh, you know, she thinks it's nice that she has a platform that she can kind of slowly show people that, hey, I'm changing as I go through my life. And I don't know what those changes for her are going to be. I don't know what changing means for her specifically, but something that I personally think is that even when people lead a certain type of lifestyle, having a kid can change a lot of things. Uh, A lot of people make uh, lifestyle changes and, you know, contemplate belief systems and the way that they do things and all that jazz when they have this new little tiny human life that they are responsible for shaping and taking care of. Now, obviously, that isn't always the case, but I know there's a lot of people online and in the past and the present that would say things like how, you know, Trisha Paytas should never be a mom, like, the, or even talking about other people, like, this person should never be a parent, they should never have a child, like, God forbid they ever have a kid. But, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like, personally, you know, you should maybe wait a little bit to pass judgment, see if that big lifestyle change of having a child gives them a sense of responsibility to, you know, change a few things. Maybe loving a child might change a few people for the better. You know, who knows? It's pretty crazy stuff. But moving on, like I was saying, Megan Trainer, she had Trisha Paytas on this podcast and the, both of them are mothers. So they were discussing their pregnancies. Uh, they were going through their birth stories, kind of how that went for them and so on and so forth. 
I wouldn't recommend the podcast necessarily because Megan herself says it's kind of like rated R and there's a, a million other less PG topics that they go through in the podcast itself. But towards the very end of the episode, okay, these two women, they're talking very briefly very briefly about how they both think homeschooling is such a cool idea and that they plan on homeschooling their kids. And Megan Trainer talks about how her and her husband decided to school their son. She pretty much explains that they hired this really sweet teacher who comes out to the house and conducts her child's school day, uh, even when she's not home and has to work because, you know, she's like big celebrity, whatever. Okay, so here's that clip of the podcast. Oh, but, but we're I mean, homeschooling our kids. Yeah, I, I think like that's how it goes. Heard it's great. Like people have like homeschooling it's meetings, great. and yeah, and there's so many teachers out here that are so nice and kind. And yeah, that will, will come to your house and like do a whole thing. Our teacher, can I say this? Our teacher that we have like takes pictures all damn day, and has, we have like a shared album. Yeah, that's yeah, the best. Cool. Like if I have yeah. to work and they have like three hours of school, and then he sends me pictures. I love that, and that's like all they need. But school they really drag out, right? With like recess and like yeah. free time and study time. I'm like, yeah, okay. even like when you're in high school and you're homeschool, I see all these kids that are like, I had two hours of work, yeah, and then I went and did like yard work and like learned real life things. Yeah, yeah it's so much better. So I feel like yeah, that's where it goes. But Let's save our kids. But now people didn't have uh, a problem with that clip, I guess, but they did have a problem with a 21 second clip of the podcast that took place during that conversation which has since been removed from the official episode and i'd play it for you guys but language so i'm just going to read to you some of the things that were said so megan trader says we're homeschooling our kids referencing her and her husband and then trisha you know agrees she says same i think everyone should and then megan says everyone on TikTok is, they're like, this is what it's like to have a kid in school in America. I have a bulletproof backpack. And I was like, F all that. And then Trisha goes on to pretty much say, yeah, that, but also kids can be mean. Teachers, that was my problem, teachers. But then also, yeah, the violence. I think it's just that thing. It's not even private school. It's just like having them homeschooled. And then Megan chimed in somewhere in that in agreement pretty much saying teachers f teachers and the clip concludes with megan reiterating that she's homeschooling her kids so that is the clip that people are extremely upset about it or or were extremely upset right so cut to literally less than a week after megan drops this podcast and in typical liberal caught up in online cancel culture drama fashion okay uh she offers up this wonderful little apology video we love those um because apologizing to the chronically online internet gremlins usually fixes everything so why not but uh here's her here's her apology teachers of tiktok and teachers of the world i recently said f teachers on a podcast and it's not how I feel. I was fired up because we were talking about how sending your kid to school here in America is so horrific. And what all of us have to go through, but especially teachers, is not normal and not okay. I had Jessica Paytas on the podcast and I knew her history with her teachers. And I knew my husband's history with his teachers and I was bullied by some teachers. So in that moment, I got angry and said, F teachers, F those specific human beings back in the day. But I did not mean that to all teachers. I love teachers. I fight for teachers. I think they have the hardest job and they're the most underpaid. They're the most unappreciated when they literally raise all of us. I don't want to make excuses. I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry to any teachers who I may feel bad. And I will remind myself that my words definitely could have a consequence. And I will be more careful. Love you all so much. I'm so sorry again. Thank you all for helping me. So naturally you get the the pandering on the, you know, school shooting stuff and how, you know, sending your kid to schools in America is just so horrific, right? Uh, which it is, but, you know, some actual, like, well thought out security measures could probably help a lot with that, you know, just putting that out there. Anyways, um, but then she goes on to be like, you know, I was I was saying this because I was angry in the moment because I was just thinking about she's talking about her experiences in school with teachers, her husband's experiences in school with teachers, Trisha Paytas's uh, experiences with schools and teachers. So it's like you know you've got her Megan Trainer, her brother, 
and Trisha Paytas in the room. So two out of three of those people have literally sat there and been like, I had negative experiences in schools with teachers, like whether that was uh, being bullied by teachers or made fun of or, you know, not, you know, being, you know, treated nicely as as children should be, especially when they're not yours. Um, and so they've got those experiences. And then Megan Traders also talked about her husband's own experiences going to school as a child star and the bullying he experienced and how a lot of teachers just kind of brushed it off and didn't do anything about it and just kind of, you know, whatever. So you, you've got these people with these experiences. And just because the way she verbalized her frustration with that was... Uh, a very simplified statement of F teachers. Are, are their experiences not, you know, relevant? Do we, do we not have to go, oh, wait, maybe a lot of people have actually had bad experiences with teachers? Like, you know, it, it's just, it, it's really stupid because you've got plenty of good teachers in the world, just like you have plenty of good priests in the Catholic Church, right? Okay, but, you know, the second that there is a, a scandal that comes out, where something happened because there was a priest in the Catholic Church who did something not so great, okay, um, it's all Catholic priests, right? With teachers, it's like, you know, somebody has a negative experience with a teacher and it's like, no, all teachers are great teachers. You can't ever, like, and it's like, what? Sorry? There, of course, there are good teachers. There's plenty of teachers that are good Christian people, and there's ones who aren't Christian and are good people, okay, and they really care about your kids, and they want to spend the time coming alongside your kids and help them with whatever it is that they're struggling with. Okay, there are good people in that profession, but there are also a lot of people that should not be around kids to begin with, much less teaching them and forming them and spending that much time in a classroom with them every day. That's just the reality of it. But that's the Megan Trainer situation, okay? And before we talk about Mr. Larry Arn of Hillsdale College uh, and how exactly he got into a whole hot water mess of his own, I want to give y'all a little bit of context, uh, a bit of backstory or whatever. So those of you who know a little bit about Hillsdale, um, if you don't, maybe you should watch or listen to the podcast that I recently did on New College of Florida and their alternative commencement. Uh, so yeah, you should do that. But those of you who know anything about Hillsdale College, you know that they follow a classical education model. So in that same vein, Hillsdale has a little charter school initiative, okay, going on through something called the American Classical Academy, or ACA. And ACA is attempting to work with some state governments to set up these classical education model K-12 through charter schools in some states. And one of those states happens to be where I live, Tennessee. Now, before the ACA can just set up shop here, right, they have to go through an application and approval process where they apply to every relevant school district that they're wanting to set up a charter school in. And I wrote an article on the status of these applications as recently as the end of April this year. And at that time, ACA's charter school applications that had already been rejected in Robertson County, Maury County, Montgomery County, and actually uh, as of July last year, those applications had already been rejected by Clarksville, Jackson, and Murfreesboro school districts. So what's happened in Tennessee, uh, clearly, is that most of these ACA charter school applications are, are being blocked upon first review. And according to Robertson County board members, the reasoning for their non-approval was that board members did not believe the application met standards for effective academic, financial, and operational plans required to establish such a charter school. And some of the board's concerns regarding the application, okay, were allegedly that the proposed curriculum is not currently aligned to Tennessee's academic standards, the budget was not realistic, and they felt there was not an efficient process for identifying at-risk students, gifted students, and students with disabilities. Personally, I feel like these reasons are at least partially an excuse uh, to vote against the 
you know, just more charter schools in general. A lot of people are against more charter schools. Uh, but also, I think that some of Larry Arn's comments, which we're going to go over in a second, uh, created so much negative press around Hillsdale and anything related with Hillsdale that some of ACA's charter school applications have been rejected, like, because of that. Um, that and a lot of people who are in favor of the public school system and are very much... Um, intense about we just need to make the public schools better that's what we need to do to fix education right those people i think they have uh they're, they're so used to public school structuring that they have a hard time accepting the classical education approach in general um i do know that one tennessee county rutherford county did end up approving aca's application with a vote of five to two so there's that i guess now, you may be asking, Adelia, what the heck did Larry Arnn say that was so controversial as to affect the approval or non-approval of just an Associated Entities Charter School application? Well, apparently in June of last year, 2022, okay, Hillsdale held a sort of conference type event down here in Tennessee uh, in like a Cool Springs Conference Center or something like near Nashville area, for those of you who don't know. And in attendance at this event uh, was Tennessee governor's or Tennessee's governor, I can talk, Tennessee's governor, Bill Lee, okay? And at the conference, Larry Arn hosted a sort of invite-only, like a little exclusive private reception. And uh, during this reception, he and Governor Lee sat on a stage, and uh, I'm pretty sure what was happening was they were just discussing various things having to do with both K-12 through and higher education and, you know, what that's looking like from a conservative perspective. And someone at this event videotaped this conversation and sent it into the News Channel 5 reporter, Phil Williams, uh, who, of course, took the opportunity and ran with it completely. So um, why don't we give some of these controversial comments a listen? If you work in a college, you'll know this, unless you work in the ed department. Ours is different, but uh, they're the dumbest part of every college. <laughs> the teachers are trained in the dumbest parts of the dumbest colleges in the country. And they're taught that they're going to go and do something to those kids. And the administrators you hire are all diversity people. And that helps you, by the way, with your federal requirements that you have a certain number by co color. They're messing with people's children. And they feel entitled to do anything to them. We'll see how education destroys generations of people. It's devastating. It's, it's, like a, it's like a plague. You don't have to be an expert to educate a child. Because basically anybody can do it. So there's that. Um... My, my thing is, okay, let's, let's kind of break down some of the stuff that he said, okay, right? So he says... The teachers are trained in the dumbest parts of the dumbest colleges in the country. That That is, like, the key thing that was, like, making people angry. It's like, you're calling teachers dumb. How dare you call teachers dumb? And it's like, well, you know, to be fair, like, not that I would personally use that language, because I think a lot of the phrasing that he used, a lot of the language that he used is pretty inflammatory, like, could very easily be taken the wrong way. So, uh, you know, I personally, if I was in his position um, as, like, such a big figure that could get into a controversy like this, I would personally try to uh, use different language, uh, calmer language, and be more specific as to what I meant. But, you know, to be fair, when you go get a degree in education, when you go get your bachelor's in education, right, um, you're really learning, like, you, you take all the same general education courses as, as everybody else, right, and then you're really just learning how to do things in a classroom like you're 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 learning how to be a teacher it it doesn't really mean that you're really studying the subject that you're going to be teaching necessarily you're just you're studying how to teach something which you know if you if there are a lot of people who don't know how to teach that's perfectly fine uh i think getting a degree in education is a perfectly respectful degree i mean especially if somebody's super passionate about that i don't see the problem um you know, at least you're not a communications major. That was a joke. 
please take it as a joke. Anyways, um, so, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, especially with the shortages of teachers that a lot of uh, school districts are experiencing, there's a lot of, like, qualifications that get thrown out the window in general. Like, a lot of people are working as teachers that didn't even go to school to get an education degree. And, you know, some of them didn't even get teacher certifications. They're really just glorified subs, but are hired on full time because there's not enough teachers in that area to hire. Um, but well, let me let me put it this way. OK, I know that subbing is different than being a full time teacher, but I could sub. I, I can go up to a local school district right now and I can sub. If they need a substitute teacher, they can call me and I, as a 21-year-old person who has not completed, uh, you know, and gotten a degree, not that I think you should need a degree in certain things, but, you know, I could go substitute teach for however long they want to keep me on as a substitute teacher. I could teach an entire semester as a substitute teacher, depending on the circumstances, and I'm not you know, I'd probably do just as well as some of the people who have education degrees. And that's kind of what he's getting at, I think, is just the fact that you're not really spending your uh, your two years where you're supposed to be specializing in a specific subject. You're not really spending that getting super, like, super expertise <laughs> in uh, the field that you're going to be teaching. And actually a lot of like uh, the lower grades, you know, those kids, depending on the school, of course, stay in a classroom and they have the same teacher for multiple subjects, right? So th that teacher is not like expertly trained in every single subject they're teaching. Now, once you get up to high school, sometimes, you know, it's more likely for that to be the case that somebody majored in English and is teaching English, you know, and as you get up to like higher education, that's usually the case is somebody who majored in government, studied government, they're teaching government and, you know, that sort of situation. But, you know, this, it's not always the case. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, he also says about teachers that they are taught that they are going to go and do something to those kids. Do they ever talk about anything except what they are going to do to those kids? And my impression personally hearing him say that is just the whole idea of like when you say, oh, I want to be a teacher and you go into the education department and you're taking all these classes and you're getting certified to become a teacher, I feel like the narrative is oftentimes, um, you know, you're going to make a difference. As their teacher, you spend a lot of time with them. You're, you're, you're the authority. Like, they're going to look up to you. You're really going to do something in their lives. It is your role to change these kids' lives. And I think that's what he's saying. I think a lot of people on the left kind of took that and uh, pushed it like he was implying that, you know, the that these teacher that he was saying these teachers are taught that they're gonna like groom these kids or whatever. I, th I think people took it the wrong way. I don't think that that's what he meant. But you know, again, we have to be careful how we phrase our words, especially when we're, um, you know, doing things like this in front of the public, right? <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then he says. In colleges, what you hire now is administrators. Now, because they are appointing all these diversity officers, what are their degrees in? Education. It's easy. You don't have to know anything. And to be completely honest, I, I was talking to my best friend about this when I was like listening to Larry Yard's comments the first time, right? I'm like, <laughs> okay, there's a lot of diversity officers. Let's just be real. Let's be real about this. If you've ever gone to college, okay, uh, at least if you've ever gone to a four year college, uh, some of these things are a little less prevalent at community colleges just because it's usually a smaller campus, less resources. It just depends on where you go. But um, a lot of four year colleges, four year universities, okay, they have an insane amount of people who are literally just there to promote diversity talk about diversity, and listen to any complaints that students have about there not being enough diversity. Like, that's what they do. And it's, he's right. It's an easy job. You don't have to know anything. And what happens is there are a lot of people, because they majored in education, maybe they didn't want to get uh, certified to teach K through 12. Okay, maybe they just have a degree in education. And so then they get hired 
by their, you know, alumni or they get hired by a different college campus. And that's where they end up working in administration as a diversity officer or just, you know, a, <laughs> like an admissions officer or whatever. And it's like, and it's not that you can't, you know, get the job that you want to get, right? Whatever, whatever you want to do, that's fine. I could care less. But at the same time, it's like, he's not entirely wrong. He's just phrasing it in a very like controversial way in a way that could really be taken a million different ways that that's kind of how I'm feeling about a lot of the stuff he says um yeah and then the other main thing he says here's a key thing that we are trying to do we are going to try to demonstrate that you don't have to be an expert to educate a child because basically anybody can do it and when he says this I've heard some of the other stuff that Larry Arn said and it it relies a lot on how smart kids are to begin with okay kids are very smart um, we, we do like to act like we have to teach them a lot of things. Um, and in a way we do, but mostly by just existing because kids are very observant. Okay. And I'm not saying all kids, I'm not saying there aren't kids with learning disabilities. I'm not saying that there aren't kids who struggle with certain things. Okay. There are just like there's adults who do, but I'm saying that kids are very smart. They catch on to things very quickly. They are very observant. They, they watch you. They watch what you do, they listen to how you talk, and they just absorb it all. They're, you know, the phrase, kids are sponges, or they're like sponges, right? And so it, the statement relies a lot on what a child can already teach themselves if you just stepped back and watched them develop by just observing the things around them, right? And then also, um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch this a little bit and say, you know, maybe for once, um, we have somebody who's doing public speaking who might be a little bit in favor of homeschooling because, um, you know, th that's the criticism that a lot of homeschooling moms hear is, well, but you're not a teacher. How do you teach your kids? Um, but <laughs> it's, it's not hard. It, it's not hard. Yes, there are, once you get up to higher level education, like calculus, okay, or advanced chemistry, stuff like that, okay, it's a little bit harder to just follow a curriculum schedule and, you know, teach a kid, but, you know, there's a million other resources for that. There's There are people who majored in that stuff in college. There are people who have spent their whole life doing that stuff and literally do tutoring sessions on it or teach classes at homeschool co-ops uh, to kind of step in and be that resource for homeschooling moms. So, you know, but a large majority of a child's education, when, especially when they're young, it's not hard. It's really not. And, you know, I think a lot of the flack that um, Larry Arn got for that particular statement is uh, teachers and people who know teachers being upset because um, you know, teachers work so hard and you don't know the amount of stress that's on teachers and the amount of planning they put into everything and the amount of this and the amount of that and the time and the effort and the energy and the care. And it's like, well, yeah, but the thing is, is that teachers are teaching classrooms of what, 20 something kids, depending on the state. Some states have limits, some states don't. Some, you know, teachers end up with classrooms of over 30 students, which is a bit ridiculous. But part of the hard work and the stress that comes on teachers, okay, is just the sheer amount of students that they have to keep track of, control in a room, find resources for, okay? It's it's less so in the teaching, if you ask me, and more so in the how do you teach a classroom of that many kids. That That's how I feel about that. It's not so much that anybody can teach a classroom of 30 kids and it's more so anybody for the most part can teach a child you know there, there's a little bit of a difference okay and yes of course there are people who are not 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 good role models they're not gonna be a good teacher to anybody but th that's just across the board okay <laughs> but <laughs> there are a lot of people who others will say you can't teach your kid or you can't teach anybody who really can that's what curriculums are for you follow along with it. It's not that hard. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so after that footage came out, um, Governor Lee 
Larry Arn, and honestly, Hillsdale College itself went under like massive fire by the media. Governor Lee for not interrupting Larry Arn or correcting him, how dare he, uh, <laughs> for what he said. And um, Hillsdale, just because why not lump every professor, student, and member at a college um, in under what one guy who happens to be the president of Hillsdale said when speaking to a room of people, he probably expected to understand what he was saying. But yeah. Uh, non-surprisingly, Representative Gloria Johnson, uh, a Democrat state representative out of Knoxville, um, she was all heated and overdramatic about this, um, but sh she likes to be that way. Um, in an interview with News Channel 5, she said, I will make sure that every teacher in every rural county sees this video and hears about this because they need to know. Uh, she goes on to say, he talking about Larry Arn, just called teachers the most ignorant people on a college campus, and they laughed. That's how she says it in the video. They laughed. Okay. <laughs> and the governor is sitting here while this is happening, saying nothing. It boggles the mind that someone could be so evil and so ignorant at the same time and so cowardly as to say nothing and not stand up for a single Tennessee child or a Tennessee teacher. Um, but whatever, Gloria Johnson is one of the last people I would uh, take seriously on this, especially when she's tossing the world or the word evil around like that, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Governor Lee kind of sucks and has probably done plenty of crappy things. Um, I'm not making the argument that he's a, a beautiful man who just does all the good things for our state and his constituents. But at the same time, I don't think this uh, particular situation warrants the use of the term evil. That's just my opinion. Uh, some of you may recognize Representative Johnson's name. Uh, that would be from her stunts that her and two other rep Democrat reps pulled during Tennessee's legislative session this year, where they like protested from the House floor, uh, so on and so forth. Um, they were labeled the Tennessee Three. So, you know, all that stuff. Besides people online being upset with both Larry Arn and Governor Lee, there were some more, I guess, uh, prominent, if you will, people who put out statements on the whole situation. One example of this was Carson Newman University's president, Dr. Fowler. Uh, and that's a university out in East Tennessee, for those of you who don't know. But he put out the following statement. He said, We're proud of our university's rich history and tradition of educating Tennessee's finest teachers. Our rigorous program seeks to prepare educators who are caring, called, and competent. Over the last 10 years, three Carson Newman alumni hold the prestigious Tennessee Teacher of the Year Award. This reflects the commitment to excellence in our teacher education program. The recently highlighted derogatory comments made at a political event about the competency of the more than 70,000 teachers who are educating Tennessee's children are misguided, inappropriate, and uninformed. Educators in Tennessee deserve our appreciation, especially after navigating the challenges of a pandemic. Their service and dedication are marked with stories of those who continually go the extra mile to ensure their students receive a quality education. While I am grateful for all of our educators across the state, I want to express my appreciation for our Carson Newman Education alumni, as well as Carson Newman's outstanding education faculty who devote themselves to preparing incredible, highly impactful teachers. To every Carson Newman Eagle who is a teacher, you have the respect, support, and admiration of the entire Carson Newman, Newman family. So that's the statement he put out. And for those of you who don't know, um, Carson Newman is one of many Christian colleges that unfortunately spent several decades neglecting the faith aspect of their educational environment. I did get the chance to speak with leadership there last year, and apparently they have like this like whole five-year plan, 10-year plan type thing, and they're, they're slowly attempting to sort of redirect the ship, as it were. Um, it's just a difficult thing to do without causing chaos when something has been allowed for so long or been a certain way for so long. People aren't usually super uh, accepting of changes like that, no matter what environment we're discussing. But so, you know, little disclaimer there. But the thing is, Carson Newman, um, as you can kind of gather from Dr. Fowler's statement here, it, it turned, they turn out a lot of teachers from their education department. Um, so, so I, you know, this makes sense that they would stand up in defense of teachers. I just don't personally think it was necessary. And I also don't really see Larry Arn's comments as derogatory. Um, 
I guess you could argue that they might have been inappropriate. I just think he should have used less inflammatory language and this whole thing wouldn't have been such a big deal. Um, Also, here you go. Apparently, even a Republican representative and House Education Administration Committee chair at the time of this whole thing, Mark White out of Memphis, uh, he came out saying that regarding Hillsdale's ACA charter school initiative, he will not support an alliance with Hillsdale College moving forward. Uh, Representative White made these comments in July of 2022, and he said, uh, I've talked to enough members that any conversation that will bring Hillsdale in just won't have any chance of moving forward next year. And he pretty much uh, attributes his stance here to the idea that because of all this controversy, any conversations uh, that could be had about legislation or charter schools with ACA or whatever would kind of be overshadowed by Larry Arnn's comments. Uh, making it difficult to get anywhere with that stuff. Now, of course, the biggest difference that I see here between this situation and the one we talked about before with Megan Trainer is that Larry Arn did not, in fact, apologize, which I think is honestly kind of fair. People can either choose to view you as the worst human being ever for maybe phrasing something a bit off or, you know, not being entirely clear because us humans are always so clear with the words that we speak. Uh, But, (laughs) you know, whatever. So people can choose to view you like that because they feel like being super emotional for no legitimate reason, or they can choose to look into who you are as a person, you know, what other stuff you've done, what you represent, and what maybe you actually meant and how you maybe actually meant for your points to come across. And, you know, if Larry Arn doesn't want to apologize for how people took what he said, uh, then whatever. I could care less. Because what does someone you've never met apologizing... Okay, (laughs) what does someone you've never met issuing a mass apology really do? That's right. Nothing. Um, It does nothing except for maybe satisfy some people's sense of pride, if you ask me. You know, it feels good when somebody admits, like... I guess you were right to criticize me. And it's like, oh my gosh, yay, I got them to apologize to me. Most of the time, these apologies aren't even like, you know, genuine, right? But where Governor Lee is concerned, he didn't really apologize either, since, you know, he didn't even do anything besides just not interrupt or contradict his colleague on stage in front of a ton of people. Uh, But yeah, he was pretty much like, I didn't say it, and who am I to stop him from saying it? Uh, Dude pretty much endorsed Larry Arnn's views without actually endorsing it, so whatever, there's that. Um, But that's all of it, right? No. No. Apparently there's more. Uh, Apparently, after all of this, some additional footage additional footage, uh, (laughs) made waves. And this footage was from a speech that Larry Arn did back in 2021, where he was also talking about education and teachers and all that. Uh, We really got to keep this 24-hour news cycle going, my guy. Okay. (laughs) But this additional footage comes out and everything gets all stirred up again. And in this footage, Larry Arn is quoted as saying these few things. Okay. He says, what happens at those state universities is that they are clones of the most elite to the best of their ability. Very common, that is. It is the third tier ones and the second tier ones, some that train the teachers, which, you know, okay. I don't really know what's controversial about that. It's just kind of like the reality. Every state university, every like private university that's not like an Ivy League does their best to be fancy and intellectual, I think. Like, you know, every department has its pride in something. Like, I don't, I don't see the issue with that statement. But then he goes on to say this about teaching more specifically. He says, if the one in this room who knows the least about it set out honestly to construct a basic curriculum along the long-established lines, you would do it more or less successfully than these people, he's saying, in about a month. It's not that hard. And you know what? He's right. It's not hard to put together a cohesive curriculum and follow a cohesive curriculum. It's not. That's what curriculum is for. That's what teacher's guidebooks are for. Okay, you have you have the student's version of a of a handbook or a textbook or whatever, and you have the teacher's version. It's almost like the teacher's version is there to help the teacher teach. That's all I'm saying. Um Arn also claimed, according to News Channel 5, that no Hillsdale student had ever left kindergarten unable to read, and people reacted to his claims about how smart kids naturally are and how they pick up on things and how they so often are capable of teaching themselves certain things and how cool that is. Okay, people kind of twisted what he was saying and were all like, 
we're not talking about reading, okay? We're not talking about reading words on a page. We're talking reading comprehension and literature uh, comparatives and, you know, a, a literary analysis, okay? Getting the main idea of a passage and understanding central themes and connecting them to other literary works, okay? And my question to the people who responded with this type of, you know, approach is, do you even know what a classical education model is, okay? A, a, classical, mo a classical education model puts emphasis on exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, it, it's literally that. So, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, guys, that that's pretty much the timeline of events, personally. Um, I view this as another instance where the press media and those active on social media did what they do best when clips like this come out. They neglected to provide any nuance or perspective on Larry Arn's comments. And honestly, I believe this was mostly done, like it usually is, for the sake of headlines and promoting drama and division, uh, just like what happened with Megan Trainer's initial comments, right? Uh, we never ask why someone did what they did. We never question if they misspoke and accidentally misrepresented themselves, like we all have the ability to do, especially when speaking in front of a crap ton of people. We never say, hey, maybe, okay? Maybe this person used inflammatory language, so let's put aside the words and the phrasing that they specifically used and see if there is anything to their base statement or belief. Okay, we don't do that as a culture. We don't do that as a society here in America. We really don't give other people the benefit of the doubt at all. And I'm not even saying Larry Arn or Megan Trainer were necessarily right to say what they did. Okay, especially when both of them have careers where they know people are watching and will nitpick everything they do. But come on, okay, the, the backlash in both of these situations is honestly melodramatic at best. I feel like I say this all the time when I'm talking with people in my life, but oh my gosh, okay? People have got to, got to stop with the generalization, okay? Sweeping generalization, that is a logical fallacy. Uh, you cannot go through life looking at people through a, a generalizing lens. Grouping people together is never a solid argument. Each person is an individual. However, to add on to that, okay, as somebody who's a bystander or an onlooker or whatever, right, as someone scrolling through social media or, or perusing news articles or whatever it is that you do, we also have to recognize that a huge chunk of the time, um, when you hear another person make a generalization, it can typically be assumed that they know there are exceptions to the claims that they're making. Uh, that, that young conservative complaining about older conservatives using inflammatory language and escalating division instead of de-escalating it, um, i.e. myself, um, that young conservative knows that not every older generation conservative uses inflammatory language. They know that it might not even be most older generation conservatives that do so. Okay, it's just a flaw in the way that us humans speak, okay, and organize our thoughts and feelings, right? So th there's got to be work done on both sides uh, of the coin, if you ask me. We've got to be more careful where and when we make generalizations like that, because there's practically always an exception to a stereotype or a people group or whatever. But we've also got to recognize that maybe sometimes when someone makes a generalization like F teachers or teachers are dumb <laughs> or whatever without verbalizing all the possible exceptions, that that person, um, you know, you, maybe sometimes you can assume that that person, they know that those exceptions are implied, okay? Maybe, maybe sometimes we need to give people the benefit of the doubt and go, those exceptions to what they're saying are implied. But, you know, yeah. That, that, that's about it for today, y'all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Subtle Rampage Podcast. Maybe you learned something. Maybe the situation is making you think. Either way, I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, comment, whatever the options are for your streaming platform of choice, and you will hear from me again soon. But until then, bye-bye.